thought, oh, I found this great new formula, and like we've got bu buying customers, and you know, then I do a whole bunch more research and find out it's this formula called RFM, which stands for Recency Frequency Monetary. And they look at each prospect and see recency, how recently did they purchase, frequency, how frequently do they make purchases, and monetary, what was the monetary value of those purchases. And th there's no hard, fast numbers with this. So if you've got RFM being the highest values, let's just say that you broke it down to its simplest form, and you scored a zero, a one, or a two for each prospect in each of those areas. So you have a zero for R, a zero for F, a zero for M, a one for R, a one for F, one for M, whatever it happens to be. But you break it down, you've got three categories. What you would do is you would mail to your sixes first, meaning two for R, two for F, two for M. That's a six total. That's the highest, that's the best possible. You mail to them. If you make money, they would mail to the fives. If they make money, they mail to the fours. If they break even, they go no further because the threes, the twos, the ones, and the zeros are not going to produce any results. I started looking at online and I went, okay, well, how does the typical online marketer build their list? Let's drive people to a page, let's give them something for free, and get their name and email address, and then promise them something else for free later. Well, with those prospects, we have a recency value of zero, a frequency value of zero, a monetary value of zero. So we've got the worst possible prospects that you could ever have based on a century of data in direct response marketing. And this is what we're being taught to build our lists with. And we're told, well, if we overcome you know, everything with this and we build a relationship and we do all of our job, we're going to get buyers. And yeah, that's true. That can work. But here's what a lot of people don't talk about is you got to be a good copywriter to, to form a relationship with people through email. I was thinking quarter mania at first and I ran the numbers and went a quarter, you know, all I have to do is make 100 sales and I'm already at a $25 product and that's too much to really test this with. So I'll do it in a nickel and what would, what would happen is um, a nickel is the way it would start out and then the next sale would be a dime and the next sale would be 15 cents and the next sale would be 20 cents and the next sale would be a quarter. So each subsequent sale it would say how many sales have occurred increment the price by five cents and charge the next person that. And I mean, if you look at marketing in general, it's great for scarcity because it, you know, price actually does go up in real time. And so anyway, I came up with this idea in May of 2005. I sit on it for six months. Like, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. Well, I did it for a reason. And the reason was I really wanted to be able to test my theory on will a buying list be better than just any old regular list? Basically released this nickel mania thing. I put three products together. One of them, Keith Wellman actually wrote. I said, dude, you want to do a product? Sure, okay. So he wrote a product for me and I did a couple other products and I unleashed it to one of my shared lists. So I just did this new viral marketing system that generated 10,000 prospects in a matter of a week and generated you know, $40,000 in sales. And I said, hey, look at what I did, everybody. And all these people are buyers on my list now who bought my viral marketing information showing how great of a viral marketer I am. So I've got this list of viral marketing buyers who see me as a viral marketing expert recommending a viral marketing home study course. Well, when you put all the pieces together, it turns into some pretty good results. And at the time, I became the top selling affiliate for any internet marketing release that had ever been done by more than double. But find people that are at close to the same level that you're at or, or that can complement what you're doing and work up from there and like, try to grow the whole network of people. A lot of people don't, don't really realize that that's what happens quite a bit in the internet marketing space is, yes, there are clicks, absolutely. And they just seem like they come out of nowhere. And well, how did this happen? You look at like, uh, first it was like uh, Mike and Russell and me and Ewan, and then very shortly after it was like uh, Harris, Fellman, and Telman Knudsen. It's like, where did these guys come from? They're just like out of nowhere, but they hooked up with each other and then they both collectively worked with a few other people. Now they've got this group and you know, all the groups sort of talked among each other. But I would almost guarantee that if there was a day where there was one person from each group promoting, you would definitely see where everybody stands. It's who is the friends, who, do we, or who are you with the longest, where did you come from? But it really boils down to who's, who, you know, who's your friend. Sometimes the money is nice, and I mean, that's why everybody's in business, but it's not just about that part of it.